let's talk about Toyota. This isn't one, and you know that because you've clicked on a video that has Honda HRV in the title. But for the last three decades, basically, Toyota has been at the forefront of making hybrids. Now, cars like this are trying to take down the veteran. But can they do it? I've been driving this Honda HRV EHEVL hybrid for the last couple of months, and I'm about to tell you all about it, what you might need to know if you're considering buying one, how it drives, what it's like inside, and if it's worth it. The current HRV, specifically this hybrid, comes in looking a little bit pricey on paper. But if you are after a small hybrid SUV and you're not too keen on anything the big T has to offer, this one could be just right for you. You can read all my monthly update reviews at carsguide.com.au, but for now, keep watching the video to find out more about this little SUV. Called the Honda HRV EHEV L in full, it's the second model for the brand to launch locally since it moved to a single price retail sale model after the Civic last year. It's also the second to launch with the brand's newish EHEV hybrid system, but we'll come back to that. It's one of two variants in the current HRV range, with the other being the entry level non hybrid VIX. That one will set you back 36,700 drive away, which is already starting to approach top spec Hyundai Kona Highlander areas. But this one, it comes in at 47,000 drive away. That means its price is approaching some pretty powerful and well spec small SUVs like the Volkswagen T Roc R or the Hyundai Kona N which means it's probably going to bring its A-game when it comes to features, right? On paper, it's got a few good features going for it. The Hybrid L comes with heated seats and a heated steering wheel, a 9-inch touchscreen, a 6-speaker sound system, which is better than the other models for, active cornering lights, LED DRLs, and leather cabin accents. It's also got a powered tailgate. It's not bad, but it's probably just about the least you would expect if you're spending near on 50 grand for a small SUV. But flashy isn't the name of the HRV's game. In fact, it's missing a couple of things it probably should have, and I'll come back to that in a minute. But first, just take a look at it. It's pretty handsome, right? Elements like the body-coloured grille, the sleek lights with the LED DRLs in them and the fog lights down the bottom, all kind of come together to make a relatively minimalistic and clean face. At the moment, with cars like this and the current generation Civic, Honda seems to be on to a little bit of design mojo. Down the side, it's boxy and muscular. There's short overhangs to keep it all fairly taut, and its sloped backline doesn't really help for boot space, but does make it look almost a little bit sporty. It's not quite sporty, but it looks like it. Also of note, up the back here is this tail light that spans the entire width of the car, as is apparently tradition now as well as in the H badge, like up the front, a little bit of blue to signify that it is a hybrid. There's not heaps happening up the back here, but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Honda's kept it kind of simple in a good way. When you get into the HRV, you might think one of two things. Either, well, it looks really sleek and sophisticated in here, or, well, I just spent nearly 50 grand on a car and it doesn't look like there's much happening in here. The latter might be true at first, but what you can't see in this video is how sturdy everything feels. Everything feels really high quality, well put together, and after all, Australian sourced HRVs are actually built in Japan. Let me just quickly run you through why simplicity is working well for the HRV. Underneath this slightly outdated at this point 9 inch multimedia screen, all the important buttons for climate control are actually physical buttons. That means you're not messing around with menus, trying to find ways to cool down the car or change the vents are working. On top of that, the buttons for driving functions are down there next to the gear shifter. Again, it's easy. The steering wheel has simple buttons, and there's not a lot of sub-menus on the driver display, so you're not going in and out of options trying to find what you're looking for. The multimedia display itself, like I said, could probably do with an update, but again, if simplicity is key, it's doing a good job. Then there's also the fact that Android Auto and Apple CarPlay kind of bypass any of the issues you're likely to have with the multimedia screen anyway. Unfortunately, that's where we come to probably one of my biggest gripes about this car, but even that's something you can fix. You see, if you'd just spent 47 grand drive away on a car, you'd probably be able to take your phone, pop it here, and for it to wirelessly charge. Unfortunately, in this car, that's a $640 accessory option, which seems a little bit odd. It feels like it should just be standard. 
And it's fine for me because I have an Android phone and Android Auto is wired in this car, which means my phone's always charging when I'm using mirroring. If you have an iPhone built by Apple, Apple CarPlay is wireless and the convenience of that is kind of killed by the fact that your phone isn't plugged in and charging. Your battery's draining while you're using the phone mirroring. It's a little bit annoying. It's one of a couple of things I think are kind of missing at this price point for this car. The other being that the seats are heated but not cooled and given they're already heated it should be a massive expense to be able to cool them right. Also on the seats, they're manually adjustable. There's no electric movement which means it's fine if you're the only person driving the car but if you share it with a partner or even a housemate, it means every time you get in the car, you've probably got to do some adjustments. Just kind of a little bit annoying. I'm sure it could do with a sunroof as an option or something like that, but honestly, in the couple of months I've had the car, I haven't really looked up that much. But aside from those things, like I said, Honda gets the fit and finish of this car bang on. Even things like storage. In here, there's heaps of space for cords, cables, and fuel receipts. Storage for things like water bottles, either here or in the door. There's some really good spaces. Also other small items if you want to put anything there. And even the seats, though they don't look super premium, are pretty comfortable to sit on and that's pretty important for a seat. Back here in the second row, there's enough space for my 5 foot 11 frame. My head doesn't really hit the side of the car unless I lean too far and the seat itself is pretty comfy. However, one important thing you should know about the second row in this car is that there are only two seats. Yeah, the HRV is a four-seater, not a five-seater, which for cars in its segment is kind of unusual. It means that this isn't really useful space and even this armrest drops down onto it a little bit with a thud. It's sort of hard to lean on. There is a cup holder in the door though and a little bit of storage down here under the vents at the back. There's also two USB-A ports and a weird little document holder behind the seats in front. But there is something really impressive about these seats and they kind of do this thing that Honda has that their seats do. I'll explain after I talk about the boot space because it's kind of related. Officially, the HRV's boot holds 304 liters of storage, which is significantly less than popular rivals like the Mitsubishi ASX's 393 and even a little bit less than the style-focused Mazda CX-30's 317. But when you fold the seats down, and they do fold quite flat, there's 1,274 litres, and because of how flat they are, it's all pretty useful. In the time I've had this car, I actually did take the measuring tape out and check how wide and tall the space is in there so that you know how much you can fit in in terms of what kind of boxes. At its narrowest along the bottom, the boot space is about 100 centimeters wide, but about 120 centimeters wide at its usable widest. With the seats up, it's 70 centimeters deep and gains another 100 centimeters of length with them folded down. It's also about 85 centimeters tall, though the boot curves down at the rear so there's not a lot of roof height available. But there is one more clever thing about the way Honda uses space in this small SUV, and that's something it calls magic seats. Without sacrificing boot space, it means you can lift up the bottom part of this seat and create a much more tall storage space in the second row. This space here is actually 120 centimeters tall, and it means you could maybe take a narrow flat pack box from a Swedish furniture retailer at the same time as a potted house plant from a non-specific big green warehouse. It's a small thing, but it is really convenient. And how the HRV gets you to that big green warehouse is kind of clever. Like I mentioned, this is the second model to arrive from Honda with its newish eHEV hybrid system, which allows the engine, the electric motor, or both to drive the wheels. And it seems to rely more heavily on pure electric driving mode than its rivals. It pairs the electric system with a 1.5 litre petrol four-cylinder engine with no turbocharger for a total of 96 kilowatts and 253 newton meters. It has a 1.5 litre petrol four-cylinder engine working with that electric motor, no turbocharger, for a total of 96 kilowatts and 253 newton meters to turn the front wheels. It's not blow your socks off stuff, but compared to the other HRV on sale, the non-hybrid VIX and its 89 kilowatts and 145 newton meters of torque, it's pretty healthy. As a side note, both engines are paired to a continuously variable transmission, or a CVT. Three words that have historically been like nails down a chalkboard for those who enjoy driving. Fortunately, that's not so much the case here, but I'll come back to that. 
Over the time I've had the HRV, fuel economy between fills has ranged from 5.2 litres per 100 k's to 6.2 litres per 100 k's. Honda claims it'll do 4.3 litres per 100, and if you were really, really frugal, I reckon you could get close. But even averaging mid fives is not bad. During my time with the HRV, it's come in at 5.94 litres per 100 k's tested at the pump, and that's with a lot of inner city driving at peak hours and in stop start traffic. The trip computer, on the other hand, tells me that in the time I've been its custodian, I've averaged 5.6 litres per 100 k's. That's pretty good on paper, but does it translate to a sluggish and underperforming car on the road? Not at all. In fact, the hybrid system's really clever in this car, and it's kind of fun to drive. In fact, I think it might even be better than, if not as good as, Toyota's. Remember earlier when I was talking about simplicity being one of the things that makes this car great? Well, that also applies to the way it drives. The outputs I was talking about earlier aren't really that impressive, but even though they're not blow your socks off stuff, this car does a lot with a little. Not only does it feel perkier than it should after you've checked out its specs on paper, but its delivery is also really smooth. Its drivetrain is also really good at switching between EV, hybrid, and engine mode, and if you're not really paying attention, you probably won't notice when it does it. It's also pretty efficient when it comes to charging itself. During the time I've had it, I've noticed it go from almost completely empty to almost completely full, albeit admittedly on a pretty long highway downhill stretch. Once it is charged, it's also pretty efficient at using that energy properly. I've had it go for some quite impressive distances on EV only mode, considering it's not a huge battery. Even its CBT gearbox is pretty smooth and doesn't give you too much of that droning or thrashing that you might expect. Uh, and that's coming from someone who likes a really fun drive. Driving up slopes or twisty mountain roads, the engine's probably going to get a little bit revvy, but a car with this size engine is probably going to do that anyway. I am happy to report though that the chassis is pretty fun and dynamic. Even though it's not directly related to the Honda Civic, there is some of that DNA there and everything kind of happens as you would expect it to as you turn into a corner. The chassis and suspension is pretty communicative and the steering is well weighted and pretty responsive to inputs. Everything just works. And after a long drive of about 160 k's, I'm happy to report that it's pretty fun to take through some twisty roads as well. But around town is probably where you're going to be doing the most of your driving in the HRV. And I'm happy to say that at the end of the day, even if you're feeling a little bit stressed after work, the HRV stays pretty cool, calm and collected. The HRV comes with a four star safety rating from ANCAP, and that's not terrible, but it's short of the maximum five. Rivals like Toyota's Yaris Cross or Nissan's Qashqai have 5 stars, and it's something that might turn some buyers off. But both variants of the HRV do have a pretty solid list of safety features. Autonomous Emergency Braking or AEB, Forward Collision Warning, Adaptive Cruise Control, a good reversing camera, Traffic Sign Recognition, and Lane Departure Warnings are all standard across both variants. This hybrid version comes with some extra safety features as well, things like active cornering lights, rear cross traffic alert, and blind spot monitoring. Something else to think about if you're considering a HRV is the ownership costs. The Honda HRV comes with the brand's standard five year unlimited kilometer warranty. And then on top of that, they add a five year premium roadside assistance program. As a side note, Honda also has a six year rust protection under its warranty. Honda also offers five low price services, which basically means every 10,000 Ks or 12 months, you pay $199 and take it to a Honda center for a service. It's the same price across all of them. Overall, I reckon the HRV has taken a massive step up in terms of especially its looks over the previous generation, but also its quality. Are you likely to see as many of these ones around as you used to? Probably not at this price point, but Honda's even said that's not exactly what it's going for. If you want something that looks good, is a little bit efficient and a little bit fun, this is probably something that should be on your shopping list. If you don't mind spending a little bit more on a small SUV that isn't a Toyota and you really want a hybrid, the simple yet effective Honda HRV should definitely be considered for your shopping list.